an awakening about life, man, because going through that situation as being an innocent black man and the thing you love the most in life, rap, it's is the thing away. that not just taken away, but they use that to convict him. Mm -hmm. You know, and he could have came out and said, man, I hate rap. I don't ever want to do a song again. See, I yeah. don't ever want to be nowhere near rap, but he didn't. He didn't. And he, we asked him about that when we interviewed mm -hmm. him, is how angry are you at society for be, mm -hmm. for taking away your mm -hmm. youth from you? Mm -hmm. um, my question to you is, while you were in prison, were you angry? Um, because anybody in the right mind, wrongly convicted, would be angry out of their mind um, while they're in there. And if you were, how long did it take you to get over it? All right. Initially, I, I, was, I was very angry initially. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. So, Mac, when he came home, how big, how big was that for you? Like, man. I had a, I put a post up, man, and I was watching him because I didn't see him until he came join us on, on, the, on the tour. On the tour. Yeah. And it was happiness for me, but it was hurt watching wow. him. He was standing there and they were doing the, the sound check. And you standing there as a person, I'm like, man, this dude just did 20 some years mm -hmm. and he innocent. And he looking around at this arena. And I'm watching him, and I videoed him, like, and took a picture, and I put it up there. You understand? Y'all know what's probably going through his mind. Wow. This he was in the same position 20 years before. Yeah. And it was taken from him because he was a rap artist, and now he back on the stage, and he just and I'm looking at him like, and and it was still concerning me because you know when I got to really be around him, it was Mardi Gras time. And there's so much going on during Mardi Gras. Mm -hmm. And you go to feeling protective of him because I saw him and he was out and he was relaxed, but I could see. You understand. I You're understand. not used to the outside Like anymore. all these people. Yeah, when you, it's and, tough when you first come right, home. Mm -hmm. And then you're a known person. Correct. So this one coming, that one coming. And I'm watching him and I'm like, you know, I said, man, I got to go I'm about to go my, move, go down by my mom. I said, you going to be all right? And he's like, I'm, I'm trying to get used to it. I said, don't force yourself. Don't be in these crowds like that. And to see him now, like, cold and he laugh or he stop by my house, but he still go through it. And of that's course. what hurt me, man, mm -hmm. uh, to watch, you know, you know, to watch him, you know, sometime. And we round each other and we don't live too far from each other, you know. But the things to watch him discover things now, man, is such a beautiful thing. Like, he hit me one day in this Mac, right? He going to get <laughs> mad when I say this. He hit me. He was like, yo, they got this conservative conservatory area, man. Bird Conservatory, man, has a nice trail you can go walking on. And if the usual me would have been like, say, bro, that ain't gangster. Don't call me to go walk on a bird trail, <laughs> man, right? But then I'm realizing, like, he had 20 years where he didn't see. He couldn't none walk of this. nowhere. Couldn't about feel free air. At all. And, and, and it just shows you now. Whereas is he, his life is opening my mind to saying. You appreciate Yeah, like appreciate the every little thing right. or something that. Man, it can I be taken away that, from you in a heartbeat. But I'm going to do it right. because this dude appreciating discovering a walking trail. We from the hood. We have no walking trails. That he appreciates he appreciate that. Appreciate it. And it's like you know you got to look at it and you feel. And then when you look at him, because I can respect some dudes that you know even myself what I went through. You know, did what you did. You know what I'm saying? You got to you got to yeah, stand on you that. Gotta and stand on. Got to deal with it. You know, but. I'm looking at him like, man, that dude didn't do that. Mm -hmm. And it's like he got to adjust to life 20-some years. He went in, everything old black, and now he got great. Great, yeah. You know, and you, you, you take pride in having great because I'm still here. And you That's understand. Y'all yeah. understand. Because what we, our generation, what we went through to be still alive, come on, man. Humble. Man, how much has he changed? Humble, how much has he changed from the person that you remember, other than the things that affected him during prison, and getting used to? But how has he changed as a person, the person that you remember him uh, back to how long? I think, I and think now? honestly, his change you won't see it because I could still right now call him on the phone and the jokes we have with each other. You know what I'm saying? We joke and laugh about it, but then. The change that I do see is he's quick to teach now. Okay. You know, like, 
Yes, sir, because I was looking into this, that, and that, and that. You know, because if this go on, that, that, that. And I'm like, nah, I didn't know that. Let me check into it. And he, he's more or less, and he has a drive right now. Like, he's shooting a video somewhere. Yeah, right yeah, now yeah, I heard that. And Mac. Yeah, yeah. He's, he has a drive, man, where, and, he, and it's crazy, and I hate to say this that way because dad brought it on. He's more talented now. He plays mm. the, the keys. He yeah, I see him. I guitar. see him. He has a and he has an an awakening about life, man. Because going through that situation as being an innocent black man and the thing you love the most in life, rap, it's is the thing away. that not just taken away, but they use that to convict him. Mm -hmm. You know, and he could have came out and said, "Man, I hate rap. I don't ever want to do a song again. See, I yep. don't ever want to be nowhere near rap." But he didn't. He didn't. And he, we asked decided, him about that when we interviewed mm -hmm. him. Is how angry are you at society for be mm -hmm. for taking away your youth from you? Mm -hmm. um, my question to you is: Why you were in prison? Were you angry? Um, because anybody in their right mind, wrongly convicted, would be angry out of their mind um, while they're in there. And if you were, how long did it take you to get over it? All right. Initially, if I, I was I was very angry initially. Okay. You know, but I deal with anger um, differently. Different. I, I deal with it internally. You know, I try and I try my best not to. Um, display anger okay i just kind of deal with it inwardly and it's painful mm -hmm. but um i'm not a big religious person but i do pray and one of the things and most important things i prayed for while incarcerated was i i, I prayed you know just to not be black-hearted i didn't want to be um Bitter. Bitter. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Knowing that you're an innocent person and when we heard a story that somebody actually came up and admitted that they did Man. the crime you and know, they didn't do anything about see, it. See murder I'm sorry, Corey Miller, because we can go use that. He he made he made sure that person went and and let, you know, to mm -hmm. admit to that. And they just didn't want that, man. And, and, that, and that's the parts of the racial society and injustice system that it still exists. Because the, where, he, where he was at, that's one of the most, out of, over there in St. Tammany Parish, Slidell, man, it's one of the most racial places. Like, my, my youngest daughter lives there. And when I go there, I go straight to the house. And come right back. And come on back. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101.